Okay, so what we're going to do now is add pagination, as I said in the previous video. So I'm going to actually stop this uh, npm run dev command here, and I'm going to say npm install swr, which is going to be a dependency that we will need. Now, you don't necessarily need swr for pagination. You can use another thing called the use query. So it's really up to you which one you want to use. As I said, my example uses use swr because I think it's a very interesting feature in Next.js. I just want to uh, basically show to you how that works. And so uh, now that's that installed, let's go and restart this process. Brilliant. And we will import use SWR from SWR. And use SWR is a hook. So we're going to use it that way. So we're going to say const something and we're going to populate that in just a moment use swr and what we need to pass here is of course going to be the same url that we have here so i'm just going to take it pass it there and as a second parameter we need to provide it with a fetcher function okay so essentially you know you could write it here uh, you could write that wrapper around the, the fetch, but the exact same reason why we created it in a separate file is so that now we can reuse it here. Now, this is great. And now what this allows us to do is to extract the data property coming back from use uh, SWR. However, this will lead into a problem whereby we, we have films and then now we have data referencing exactly the same two things. So we need to make some changes in our code. And namely, we can add a third parameter to this use SWR, which is going to be called a fallback data property. And I'm just going to pass in films. And once I do that, I no longer need to reference films but i can reference data itself okay so basically i'm recreating the reference from films to data because data is going to be this use while uh, revalidate or the response from this use while uh, revalidate hook or i'm sorry still while revalidate hook and what will happen is that upon the first load the fallback data or our data is going to be films which is great because we get that through get static props and then we're going to go out and fetch for the latest films. If there's any, then of course, we're going to update our client. If there's none, then we're not going to expect any changes. And then as opposed to using films, we will now resort to using data. So now theoretically, if I hit save, nothing has changed in our application. We still see the list of films just as how we saw them before. Now, the whole reason why we're using this um, stale while revalidate pattern is that so we can enable pagination. Now, how do we enable pagination? Well, let's quickly go back to Insomnia and let's make a request to Strapi. So that's localhost 1337 slash API slash films. And we haven't done this, but you can pass in parameters such as pagination and you can pass in pagination with square brackets page and make that equal to a page index or so page number one, for example. And as a second parameter, you could pass in pagination page size in square brackets. So how many films you want to see per page? So maybe let's go with three for now. Okay. And voila, here's our data. And of course, I mentioned to you earlier that I've added some more data to Strapi. So let's just try to count this. So we have one, two, and in fact, three objects. But if we check the meta information in terms of pagination, we're on page one, page size is three, page count is three, and then we have a total of nine elements. If I change this around, so let's say page size is now two, we are now going to get, we are on page number one, page size is two, so we get two you know, things per page. We will have five pages in total, and we have nine elements returned. Now, this is exactly what we need to pass in to our Nuxjs code as well. 
except for the fact that we need to, of course, make the page index a variable. And how do you do that? Well, since we are in React, we're going to be using use state. So I'm going to say const page index and set page index. And I'm going to be using the use state hook. Of course, we need to import that from react like so so that it automatic import wasn't correct and i'm going to set the state to be one so we're going to basically start with page number one and then we're just going to write pagination page is equal to the page index and i'm just recreating that rest api call that you saw in insomnia let's go with page size of five so that's great but the next thing that we need to remember is that we have a fallback data to films which is not paginated so we need to pass this call to get static props as well so i'm going to do slash films and then we're going to just replace the page index with one because we can basically define that to be one because up on the initial load i only want to see the first page right I don't want to see any other pages so it's safe to sort of have that as a fixed value in there next up let's add some buttons so that we can actually do some pagination and what i'm going to do i'm going to grab some pre-made code because i don't want to type all of that in i'm just going to paste it in here and now let's go through that so i just have a div and I have two buttons here. One is a previous button and the other one is the next button. And I edit some logic and basically I say, if the page index is equal to one, I do uh, recolor the button to be gray and I also enable the disable property on it. And more importantly, the onClick handler is going to set the page index. Okay, so if someone wants to click the previous one, I'm going to take the current value of the page index. I'm going to decrease that by one. And I can do that very safely because I'm using uh, that as a uh, as a state on this component or in this page. And then the page index will automatically be passed to this particular call. And likewise, for the next button, I have to do some extra work because I basically have to say if data is available and if the data has a meta property that has a pagination property that has a page count, then I basically can, you know, do all sorts of things. I can disable the button. I can have the onclick handler by default to set the page index. But basically, if I don't have more pages to go to, I'm going to disable the next button. And this data, remember, this pagination page count, which I'm also using to basically say how many pages I have, all comes from the meta pagination page count property, which is a response from Strapi. So this is how all of this comes together. So let's hit save. And then let's go to our app and see what we get. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five films as expected. The previous button is disabled. We get one page out of two. And if I hit the next button, then we go to the second page where I see the other four films. And I can't click the next button because I am basically at the end of my pagination. But you see how if you add more films, so feel free to do that. Feel free to add, you know, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, hundred, or feel free to play around with these. Actually, we can do that real quick here. And I can set the page size to be, I don't know, two. I remember you have to do it in two places. Oh, and hit save. And now we're going to get, you know, two pages, I'm sorry, five pages. And now we can basically go through these individual pages like so. Okay, but I'm just going to leave it at five. But as I said, please feel free to play around with this. Okay, so that's a massive portion of our code done, but there's still a lot more that we have to do. And our next task is going to be to display information about an individual film. OK, so we're going to see how that works. And then we have to also introduce authentication to the mix. So I'll see you in the next one.